also, they are concerned as shifted. They are no longer just executing the intention and purpose of the government. Social policy, environmental justice, social justice, needs of the people, these become important learning issues. The focus and the intention that has shifted to the people. And efficacy planning is usually related to what we call today sustainable development. Before the kind of development is just develop, kill the old, develop the new. That's the old development idea. But for sustainable development, you need a lot more complex planning. So uh, in, in societies and countries in the world that have started to develop sustainable development, you see a lot more efficacy planning. And a lot more uh, planners are actually working in the business sector and the civil society and not just working in the government. So in a, in a sense, what we see in the world today is that efficacy planning is becoming more and more mainstream. There is a mainstreaming of efficacy planning because uh, the, the complexity of uh, society nowadays in the global context. Right? There are so many goals you need to achieve at the same time, so many different kinds of people you need to take care of at the same time. Inevitably, you will see that governments all over the world are forced to learn to be more, uh, to be more um, uh, flexible, right, and, and to think about development as sustainable development. And even our home government is beginning to learn the key words, right? maybe not how to do it, but learning the key words. That we say. So this is going, I think in the future, right, in the next 10 to 20 years, uh, I'm quite sure you will see advocacy planning becoming mainstream in Hong Kong. And we will be some of the people who, who participate in, in bringing it into life and making it, and making it happen. Now, transactive planning is efficacy planning improved a lot more. Efficacy planning is still uh, thinking of the planner as an elite, as the bearer of knowledge, as the professional who does all these things for the people. Right? Who provides knowledge for the people, who, 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 who orchestrate and, and create these plans for the people. But transactive planning is this one step further. Now, what we would do on Saturday morning is transactive planning. Transactive planning responds to rational planning, the, in, the inadequacy, the failures of rational planning and efficacy planning. Because they see that both rational planning and efficacy planning is pretty elitist. It doesn't empower people that much. It gives people information, it helps people a bit, and ask them what they want, and then these professionals go back and, and do those things in, in, their, in their offices. Right? So this is more like the social learning kind of model uh, we've just outlined, right? like what we do we become facilitators. So they use social learning theory. And they think that the professionals and the people in the communities can both learn from each other and bring about a planning knowledge that is better than what planners themselves could come up with. So there is a lot of interpersonal interaction, dialogue and mutual learning. In transactive learning, it's not like the lawyer anymore. The advocate learning is the lawyer-client, right, advocate-client relationship. So in, usually uh, when you hire a lawyer, the lawyers do all the thinking for you. The lawyers do all the arguments for you. The lawyer plan how to defend, how to, how to argue for your case, right? So the advocacy planner is also like that, pretty elitist. But the transactive planner is a facilitator. The transactive fa planner facilitates shared understanding among people. They engage people, the planners, the architects, the artists, the people in this community to engage in mutual learning and they learn from the clients as well. This requires two-way flow of knowledge and dialogue. Two-way flow no longer, one-way flow of knowledge. The major criticism is it is even more time consuming than advocacy planning because it involves a lot more uh, dialogue. 
and, uh, and uh, more people and more subjective ideas. But if you do it this way, it is going to be a plan accepted by most people. It will be a plan that gets a high right, uh, social acceptance. And might maybe using a few more months and even a year, a year to work with people would be quicker if you just apply rational planning and the people resist it. They hate it so much, they fight the government. Like the Lethal Street, they fought the government for eight years. Right. Um, then there's a lot, a bigger waste of time. Right? If, you, if you apply a rational planning to the people and the people hate it, right, because you don't care about what they think, they, if they come, they, they resist you and so on and so forth, they go to the court to sue you, do JR, just uh, judicial review and all that, like, and, and submit a lot of objections to the town planning board, right, and they, they do a lot of things like the Queen's Fair people and the Lethal Street people, and the West Carlton Cultural District was actually the plan was stopped, right, because there were too much protests and you have to start all over again. If you do top down rational planning badly, you actually wait, end up wasting a lot more time. Then if you spend one year working with the people through transactive planning, you come up with a plan that most people accept right, by and largely uh, feel okay about, then in the end you might actually 